What's up everybody? Welcome back to Reach Out Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle and in this week's video we're going to talk about one of the most eye-catching features that the reticulated python has and that's iridescence. I mean, whew, if you hold her up just right it looks like your snake is absolutely covered in rainbows. So what is this anyway and how does it work? Take a look at this. Those aren't just scales, that is nature showing off. Look at those colors as they magically dance across the surface of the snake. But this isn't magic, guys, this is science. Specifically, we're talking about structural coloration in reticulated pythons. So let's break it down. So this beautiful rainbow iridescence that we see is not the snake's pigment. Pigment generally consists of kind of like different shades of paint that can be put into the snake. So you have melanin, which is a pigment that creates dark browns and blacks, or xanthophores, pigments creating like yellows, golds, and others that contribute to the actual color of the snake under any lighting. And these are typically the things that can be altered in order to create the genetic mutations and color variations that we breed for with reticulated pythons. For example, an amelanistic or an albino animal would be lacking that melanin pigment, removing all of the dark and black pigments from the animal. So while pigment is more of a chemical composition of a snake, the iridescence is solely the marriage between the structural coloration and the light interaction. This is why that rainbow moves down the snake, dancing across its body as it turns and moves in the sunlight. It's probably also why it's so absolutely mesmerizing. So iridescence is not about how the snake is colored, but how light interacts with the snake's scales. These retics have microscopic layers in their scales that split up and reflect light in different ways. The technical term for this is thin film interference. And it's the same basic concept that happens when you see a rainbow in a soap bubble or maybe a puddle of oil on the street. Thin film interference sounds pretty technical, so let's discuss what that actually means. Basically, a full spectrum light wave hits these ultra thin layers on the snake's scales. Every color in a full spectrum beam of light has a different wavelength, which basically means that it is either easily deflected or it can penetrate really deep as each different color is reflected based on its wavelength, that specific color is reflected and filtered out from all the other colors, and that is what you see. Depending on how they overlap, some colors get canceled out, others get amplified. This is why iridescence seems to shift and change as you look at it from different angles. Think of it as an ever-changing prism. The end result, this awesome rainbow effect. Now, not all retics are going to express iridescence in the same way. It depends on a couple of different things. Could be the color morph, the lighting. Typically, because you're looking at reflected light, if you're viewing that over the background of a darker snake, you're gonna see it much more easily, let's say on a black snake, than you would on a white snake, even though the light is being refracted in the same way off of that white snake. It's kind of like having a flashlight on in the daytime. It just doesn't do very much. And so while the darker morphs tend to show the iridescence off a little bit more, believe it or not, you can actually see the iridescence on even albinos under the right conditions. Some snake morphs are probably not even named correctly. For example, aneurythristic animals, which would suggest that their urethrophores are lacking red pigments. This might not actually be entirely why this animal seems to be without those red colorations, because an anery, as we call them, in the light will actually refract less red iridescence than your typical animal, suggesting that the lack of red that we see on one of my favorite morphs, these anneries, is actually a combination of altered pigment and structural coloration. So this golden child that we have right here, her name is Goldilocks, and just look at how the light plays off her scales. This morph is especially known for having very strong iridescence, making it one of the flashiest options for rainbow lovers. 
The contrast between those dark, deep colored scales and the rainbow shimmer is just awesome, especially on that golden child pattern or maybe lack thereof that's showing. You just have this deep, dark void of blackness that refracts these rainbows incredibly. These are typically the snakes, golden childs, motley golden childs, some kind of combo thereof that you'll see in short form videos that blow up and go viral with rainbow snakes. Now, if you're looking to see the best iridescence on your retic, then you have to consider one really important point, and that's lighting. If you're keeping retics, and especially if you wanna show off that iridescence, light is everything. You might think your snake doesn't have very much of that rainbow sheen, but in that case, it's just the lighting or the angle you're viewing it from. Full spectrum natural sunlight is by far the best way to see this, but indoor lighting can work too. You just need to play around with it a bit. You're not seeing every single wavelength coming out of visible light like we do from the sun when you use artificial lighting in most cases. You really wanna experiment with different angles and intensities. LEDs tend to work well because they mimic natural sunlight, but you want to avoid overly harsh lights. Soft diffused light can actually bring out a, a greater spread of that beautiful iridescence. It's not just reticulated pythons that show this off. Other reptiles have it too, like rainbow boas, which are actually named for this exact phenomenon. You'll find iridescence in birds like hummingbirds or even insects like beetles and butterflies. All right, so we've talked about the science, the lighting and the different animals that have this beautiful iridescence, but you might be wondering, is there anything that you can do to bring out your retics iridescence more? Here's two quick tips. Number one, humidity. Keeping your snake's enclosure at the right humidity helps maintain their scales. Proper hydration keeps those microscopic layers in top shape and a well-hydrated snake has scales that reflect light even better. Number two, shedding. After a fresh shed is the best time to see iridescence. Right after they shed, their skin with the new scales underneath, that top uppermost beautiful perfect new layer, is clean, smooth, and super reflective. So be sure to check out your retic right after a shed and you won't be disappointed. If you're looking at healthy snakes in the wild, they always seem to have better iridescence than ours in captivity. This is probably because of their wide spectrum diet, where they're getting all kinds of vitamins and minerals that they're probably not provided with in captivity that helps them maintain the healthiest skin. So supplementation can actually put your snake right over the top when it comes to iridescence. So you see what I mean? When you're handling your snake outside, it's like a totally different animal. You get those rainbow colors that just pop. Plus, you need to get some enrichment by exploring your environments. So iridescence isn't just a cool visual effect. It's a sign that your snake is healthy and well cared for. Whether you're showing them off to a group of friends or just admiring them for yourself, that rainbow shimmer is something every retic owner should take the time to appreciate. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed learning a thing or two about just one more thing that makes dwarf and super dwarf retics one of the coolest snakes on the planet. And if you need another reason to love them, you're gonna wanna check out this video right here. Special thanks to our Patreon guys. They're the ones that make all this good stuff happen. If you wanna join Patreon, hit the link, click the like, subscribe, all the things guys, all the things.